Hello and welcome. Now, our guest today is a real treat. Now, she is known as the Baby Whisperer. And what is a Baby Whisperer? Well, you're about to find out. Now, Lisa Jolly is a nurse, midwife, and a child health nurse with over 23 years experience. Now, she holds a master's degree in maternal child health, and she's also a clairvoyant medium, utilizing uh, this ability when working with parents and their children, allowing a greater depth to any underlying questions. Uh, she's also a mother to four inspiring children. Now, Lisa works in a private practice as a healer and a coach in parenting, offering programs for parents and one-on-one -on -one consultations. So great to have you today um, here, Lisa. How are you doing? Thanks, Rach. Really appreciate the uh, opportunity to come and speak to your audience. Great. Yeah. This is wonderful. And there's, there's, this is a yeah. really interesting thing to talk about. And I'm really intrigued by the name, The Baby Whisperer. So for our audience and for me also, can you tell us like, what does it entail? Yeah. So, <clears throat> so as a, a baby whisperer, I'm actually able to, and have learned that I'm actually able to telepathically communicate and connect with children. Um, but also blending in my clinical skills as a child health nurse. So I'm able to support parents, you know, in a very special and unique way. And I just absolutely loved combining these two skills. And, um, you know, parents are very stressed and pressured, you know, in, in today's society. And, um, you know, I want parents to feel comfortable and confident in their decisions in regarding to their child. So, you know, I teach and I work with parents in regards to, you know, tapping into their own intuition with, their child and listening to their child's baby's cues. Um, so, yeah, so it's, um, you know, um, I'm just so passionate, you know, about parents and feeling this empowerment and enjoying that experience, you know, of raising their child, you know. And um, if a parent can, you know, connect and communicate on such an intuitive level, you know, and all parents can discover this, you know, it's not, a, it's not just for a select few. I was going to ask you, yeah. is this a skill that everybody can, can tap into? Absolutely. And, you know, if you listen to mums, especially, they, they feel their child, you know, they know what a cry is, even though the cries sound the same, they intuitively will feel into what their baby's trying to tell them. And, you know, as you can see from the article that I wrote, you know, there was an incident that, occurred where I was given the information from the baby and the mother was able to hear it as well, even though she didn't realise it was coming from her child. So, so is it that parents doubt, doubt their own abilities then? Like, what is Absolutely, it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because, you know, in society we have so much pressures and, you know, ways that we should be doing things and um, it can be, you know, overwhelming for the parents. So they start to question they start to not believing what they're feeling and what they should be doing, you know, by what the books say or what the world. And look, be informed, be, you know, be given that information um, from, from outside sources. I think it's really important to be informed, but then, you know, you need to sort of tap back into that intuition of what you feel is right for mm. your child. And so um, yeah, so that's what I like to do in my baby whispering. Yeah. So you specialise in guiding parents, um, as you just said, intuitively from a, yeah. a mind, body and um, like a soul focused approach soul. Um, and Absolutely. allowing parents to understand and listen to their baby and their children's cues um, and their inner voices all, all the yes. time, I guess, while they are nurturing um, I guess their own parental instincts um, and needs That's right. your journey. So can yeah. you tell us then, um, can you tell us a little bit more, I guess, how you actually do this then? Um, well, Rachel, um, underlying all of the work that I do is understanding of energy. And there's the connection and exchange of energy, you know, that goes on between everybody. Yeah. And in particular with a parent and a child, I mean, that's the connection that I tap into and, you know, I sense any misalignment or disconnection, um, which can be from emotional state, behavioural pattern, what the child's displaying or even what the parent is. And then I can help realign and strengthen that connection between that parent and child or the individual child or the parent. And um, so, you know, depending on what's needed in this work is depending on what's given. And it's that rebalancing and providing guidance for whatever issue that they've come to me for. Um, and, you know, it's the exchange between um, the energy exchange 
that occurs between a parent and a child, you know, that is so important, you know, and it comes down to connection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, connection is something that we inevitably always are seeking out, you know, to feel that connection. It's a basic human need. And when a parent can learn to connect at that deeper level, you know, that goes beyond the five senses to using this intuition, this is when the magic happens. Okay. So, um, and it can be such a beautiful thing to witness, you know, when a parent realizes that they too can communicate with their child beyond what those other senses are giving them, you know, using that own intuition to add to their parenting confidence. I mean, every, every parent deserves that. So when I work on one-on-ones, I really tap into this connection thing. So, um, and that's, you know, and it can go on whichever way. It depends on, you know, what's going on for that parent and it depends on what's going on for the child as well. And it's all about trusting it. It's trusting what it is that they are getting. And often I can reaffirm and validate for them. And, um, yeah, it's just one of those beautiful things. I mean, this connection that we have between each other, between, particularly with our children, you know, I've got a beautiful example actually the other day. I had this new mum. And I was explaining the mum's instincts, you know, the intuition to her. And, mm-hmm. and she actually gave me this experience of uh, between her own mother and herself a few years before. She was overseas and she had an altercation with someone at 4 a.m. in the morning. It wasn't pleasant. And her mum, who was in Australia, rings her at 4 a.m. in the morning saying, I'm feeling worried about you. You know, and I was just like, that gave me goosebumps when she was telling me. And it just reaffirmed to her that, wow, this connection it, it doesn't get lost. You know, this connection with our children, it does not get lost. And it, it's just, and, you know, for dads too, not just mums, uh, it lasts a lifetime. This connection that you have with your child, it lasts a lifetime. And we need to start to nurture and honour that connection that a child and parent has, you know. Oh, look, I know this sort of stuff used to be thought of as woo-woo and, you know, you call it what it is and maybe a bit out there or, um, you know, an old wives' tale. Um, but I think more and more people are starting to recognise that this is a beautiful way, an expanded way of communicating with children. Um, you know, and more people are learning and wanting to learn more about this, wanting to learn about what they are listening, the inner guidance systems. You know, they're wanting to learn more about that and understanding this and understanding that intuition that's going on. Um, so sometimes I'm just there to guide them and to validate them in that connection and to help them to really connect into their child. Um, you know, cause we're all energetic beings, aren't we, Rachel? You know, like, so, you know, you feel it when you go into a room, you feel when um, someone is, something's off. Mm-hmm. You feel it with no one even mentioning something. So talking about that connection, so, then, so it's a matter of um, then having someone remove that fear and that the doubt in their own thought process and actually yeah. knowing what they've felt in that first thought is, is the truth. Is, is that what yes, it is? Yes, that's right. Exactly. Absolutely. So parents, the thing is, right, we, we're connecting and we're intuitively understanding what our child's saying, but then you might get a well-meaning person coming and saying, no, that's wrong. That's not right. And you know in your heart that that's what your baby wants because your baby's telling you it wants to be picked up. It wants to be this. It wants to be held. It wants to be loved. And, you know, we have people say, oh, don't spoil the baby. Don't pick it up so much. It's like, hang on a minute. My baby is telling me it needs me. And so that's what I want parents to really listen to, you Mm. know, to sense their babies, sense what their baby's trying to say to them. And one of the, um, one of the techniques, I guess, if that's, probably what you're you know, wanting to know what I do is actually like, um, especially if it's a newborn baby and, you know, you can literally, um, you know, it's like a bit of eye gazing as well. And you can literally just place their ha- head on, on your hand and you're looking at them, you know, you're having that play moment, especially with a newborn, that's their play is looking at you and you just speak to your baby you actually ask it and say, you know, how's things? What, you know, what do you need to tell me today? And just take a deep breath and just feel into what you feel. Yes. Feel into what your baby's trying to tell you. Because no, more often than not, your baby is speaking to you. And I have seen this 
happen numerous, numerous times. And once a parent is trusting that and realising that actually I can speak to my baby and talk to my baby. I mean, I do this every day and I, I literally will show parents do this. And they're like, oh, I can talk to my baby like that? And I said, yeah, it's listening. It's feeling into your energy. Because I might not understand the words per se, but it's understanding your energy. Yeah. And it's, it's sometimes it's a miracle to see. And it's amazing because sometimes I'll pick up words that the baby's telling me and the mom will say, oh my gosh, I always say that. Oh, that's always what you know, mm. we're talking about. That's beautiful. And I think, wow, there you go. The baby's talking to you. So Lisa, many parents are struggling at the moment and it's hard enough, I guess, at, at the best of times. Um, and I know it's stretching their boundaries um, with the COVID-19 restrictions causing extra stress. So what help would you give to parents, uh, particularly sort of during this time? Yeah, look, you know, Rach, I see a lot of, you know, different ranges of issues, you know, from sleep deprived parents needing something to do with how to get their baby to sleep, you know, <laughs> to feeding issues, you know, to behavioural issues in children, you know, the issues are far and wide. And, and during these COVID restrictions, it probably hasn't changed much, you know, that in itself hasn't changed. And, um, but, you know, at the end of the day, parents are needing this validation and reassurances because they don't always get it straight away from family and, and friends because they are in that isolated, um, you know, we're in that restriction at the moment, which thankfully is lifting. Um, but yeah, so no matter, you know, no matter how many kids a parent has, you know, each time that child's different. So, you know, they are a lot of the times the parents are just needing that validation and, and that reassurance is what they're experiencing is normal you know, and it's within the normal paradigms of children. Um, and they're knowing that they're doing the best for their baby. Yes. Um, I mean, yeah, so I'm, I might be doing tweaks and guidances that I can give, but more often than not, I find that parents are just needing that reassurance, you know, to give them the strength and empower them to know that they know their baby best. I mean, look, there's so many books on parenting, like I said before, and well-meaning relatives know on how to raise a child I mean we all we all get that and it's great to be informed I think it's really good to be informed um but ultimately I want to teach parents you know to trust that inner guidance that, their own um, guidance because, yeah their own because it's like okay get the information take it in this is what I, all, I this is exactly how I say it. <laughs> take it in mull it around feel what's right for you and get rid of everything else yeah. Because you will get a plethora of, of information as a parent. I mean, we get overwhelmed with the opinions and advice. And, and that's what then they start to question that gut instinct, you know, of what, what's the best interest? What should I be doing, you know? So I want to just turn that around for parents. And, um, you know, most parents, I mean, all parents, majority, are all coming from a heart-centred, you know, loving, compassionate space. So... I just have a duty of care, I believe, you know, to ensure that these parents feel that they're the very best parents. Yeah. You know, we're all learning. We all stuff up. <laughs> you know, no one is perfect as a parent, even myself, you know. Um, and, you know, we're often told that it has to be this way or it has to be that way and, or, or that, in, you know, we should be doing it that way. But, you know, if a parent's coming from a really beautiful, loving nature, nurturing space, that is all they need to be doing, you know, because at the end of the day, love is really the basis of what every child needs. And, you know, I often say you can't have enough hugs. And I actually give that as a prescription to nearly every parent, more hugs needed. So, yeah. Well, if, so, if there was like yeah. one piece of advice that you would want to give parents during, I guess, this stressful time that we're still all in at the moment um, in, in what everyone's going through the, around the world right now, like what would that be? Yeah. Look, um, one, of, one of the biggest things I think encourage for parents is just to maintain that focus on what really matters and that is connection, however that looks for them, you know. Um, to maintain that focus on connection and, um, you know, also look at this as an opportunity, you know, to look within, to, to be in that still moment, to get off the treadmill and to just be with our babies, um, you know, building that deeper connection that I was speaking about. Um, you know, the restrictions are lifting, 
but we're not back to what it used to be yet. Not yet, but hopefully very soon. And, you know, people can start to be going to play groups and interacting again with others, but there are other ways that we can be connecting. Mm. Um, and so I think it's really important um, to parents looking after themselves, you know, self-love, self-care, all of that. Because emotional well-being, you know, that, that's what filters down to our child. So, you know, as a parent, we are the regulators of um, our emotions, but we also are teaching our children about regulating their emotions. Um, you know, the emotional well-being of a child is so important. I mean, the first three years, I mean, is so particularly important to laying down that foundation. Um, it's like planting the seed in the soil. You know, we want the soil to be really rich and, and fulfilling and loving and compassionate and kind. And we want them to have that emotional regulation that's in a calm and balanced way. And, you know, they can grow into a big oak tree, you know, with a really solid foundation and, and engage with their world in a really authentic and loving way. And, you know, that first three years, you know, 80% of their child's brain is growing and developing. So it's a huge momentous occasion, the first three years. And I mean, it continues to grow, you know. So I, you know, I really want, it's one of my biggest drives actually, you know, is in what I do is to give every parent and child that space, you know, to be able to nurture and support themselves in this building of the foundation for their child, you know, because... If you build that up uh, uh, to the, you know, the most beautiful soil ever, I mean, yeah, the child thrives. No matter what conditions it comes up with afterwards, you know, the storms that come and the hail and the rain. I mean, this, this tree is going to be massive. It's going to be able to withstand all of that if we build the soil right at the beginning. Um, yeah, so that's you know i can go on about that a lot. <laughs> but yeah so you know i mean that's probably more than one piece of advice but it's it's really you know looking after themselves that's mm. that's all they need to be doing yeah now you have a great yeah. practice that you use with parents to help them recenter and bring them to calm would you like to maybe just do that um that practice with us now as an example oh, i'd love to i'd absolutely love to look at something that i tell um I tell every parent that I can <laughs> that wants to listen. Um, and it's a great little simple breathing exercise. Um, and it's focusing on our breath. And it's, you know, breathing this way that I'll show you helps to balance out our sympathetic and our parasympathetic nervous systems. And it allows our body to come back into a more centered and calm state. And I think, you know, that's something that all parents would like to be able to access. <laughs> Um, to be calm and centered um, now so look you know let's do this let's let's do this so I'll just sort of pre-frame it and give it some um, how, how I you know want people to understand this so you know if you're able to we want to um, remove yourself from distractions which may or may not be very handy may not and get into like a comfortable position sitting or lying down um, if you don't have the luxury of all of that, that's okay. You know, we're parents, we're running around and we're busy. It can be done anywhere, okay? And you can be at the kitchen sink or doing the dishes or sitting around the dinner table with all the kids driving us crazy. Um, so if you're in one of those circumstances, all you need to do is stop. You know, just become still, allow life to go on around you and, you know, this might feel like you're sitting in the middle of the centre of the storm, um, but uh, it's a great exercise. So I'll, I'll just start. Is that, a, is that okay, Rachel? Go for it. So go we'll just it. go. Okay. Hmm. So if it's safe for you to do so, I'll just ask you to gently close your eyes. And this removes any visual distractions and just helps you to turn your intention inward to your breath. If you're not able to close your eyes, just soften your gaze and look at nothing in particular. And now I want you to pay attention to your breath. Allow your breathing just to settle and slow. And now you take a nice deep breath in and draw the air 
down deep into your belly and lungs and exhale. Now, if you're able to, I want you to be able to breathe in through your nose and exhale through your mouth like you were doing a very gently blowing on something to cool it. Breathing in and out. Continue doing that now, finding your own comfortable rhythm. Doing just this is an extremely powerful way to balance your nervous system and help centre and calm you. Take a deep breath in and out. Now let's add another element to this exercise. Just continue to focus on your breath as I'm talking, breathing slowly and deeply in through the nose and out through your mouth. Now as you exhale, I want you to release any stress or tension you've been holding on to. As you exhale, allow it to simply float away with each out breath. Breathing in and let it go. Breathing in and release. And just as the breath allows us to let things go, it also allows us to draw things in. So as you breathe in now, imagine an incredible sense of calm traveling with the breath, being drawn down deep into your lungs. With each breath in, feel that calm traveling deep down, permeating every cell, every nerve, every fiber of your body. Breathing in and out. Now it's just time to bring your attention back to your physicality. Gently move your head or your shoulders just to ground yourself back into your body or wiggle your toes. And then mm. your next breath open, your eyes or refocus your vision and you're back feeling grounded calm and relaxed and that's all there is to it now i would encourage everyone to practice and learn this because it's you know like shampoo you know rinse and repeat <laughs> and the more times we do it it becomes a habit um, and it can be done anytime and i mean we did quite a few breaths there but i teach parents to do three breaths and you don't have to be thinking of all the things that we were doing today but i just wanted to show you what it could be so those Thank you three for deep sharing breaths. that with us. Are all we need. Yeah. We've Beautiful. never done a meditation I hope you enjoy it. before, so that was awesome. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, there you go. Something new. <laughs> now, if parents have got any questions for you, being that, um, I guess, you know, a baby whisper is something maybe quite new um, for a lot of people to, to hear and think about. Um, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. How can they contact you and, um, you know, and, like where do they start? Yeah. So I have a Facebook, a mum's instinct, <laughs> quite clearly, um, on here on Facebook. So they can click on that and there's a book now button and they can have a 15 minute free phone call with me and they can, I can just have a chat with them, see what they'd like to do if they'd like to have a further consult one-on-one. -on -one. Um, my new um, program that's coming out on the 1st of July um, uh, which is uh, called Stress to Blessed Parenting. Um, and it goes into the concepts of a little bit what I was talking about today, you know, really delving into the connection and the ex energy exchange that occurs and how to listen and feel into that um, and to develop these skills in their parenting, bring, you know, them peace and joy and harmony, aligning these energies with their family members and deepening their connections and trusting their intuition. Oh, sorry. So I'm just <laughs> um, but yeah, so they can just do that. They can just go jump onto my Facebook page or just send me a DM if they want um, under, um, under Mum's Instinct. And yeah, we'll go from there. It's exciting. Wonderful. Thanks, Lisa, so much for the chat. And I look forward Thank to another you, one in the not too distant future. Take care. Yay. Thank you. You too. All right, bye.
Bye.